Yeah. Well, Father God, we pray for these prayer requests that have lifted up. We thank you, Lord, for uh, Jacqueline, Lord, of, of you being with her. She delivered uh, her baby, Lord God, that you'd be with, uh, continue to be with her in a speedy recovery. Father God, and be with her, uh, Tegan or Tegan, how you say her name? Yes, Tegan. 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 Be with Tegan, Lord, as, Tegan. as uh, she's in there uh, uh, learning, uh, just starting off new in this world. And I pray, Father God, for good results from the doctor. Lord God, we lift up uh, uh, Joey, Lord Jesus, that you'd be with him as he's getting ready to have his surgery uh, for tomorrow. I pray, Father God, for you to give the doctors wisdom, Lord Jesus, and, and be with his family. May you just encamp around. Father God, in the uh, operating room. Father God, fill his heart, Lord Jesus, and draw him up. Uh, yes, let him know you're there with him. And Father God, and we pray also, Lord, for uh, Rodney Albert, Lord, that you'd be with him as he's going in for surgery. Father God, you know what his body needs and uh, the, the delicacy that the doctors mentioned. We pray, Father, for your favor to be upon him. Lord God, we pray, Father, for Brother Eugene and Miss Millie as they at their request. Millie's getting ready to travel. <coughs> we pray for travel and mercy for, with her, Lord. We pray, Father, you'll be with Eugene. Father God, to continue to get better and stronger each day. We lift up uh, Brother Willie and Sylvia, Lord Jesus, as they uh, bring their request. And also his, uh, uh, his desire and, and his next step here with Pleasant Grove Wesleyan Church. Help him, Father God, to to be able to make up the right decision and Father God to be able to come forward before you yes. Father God to grow and get closer to you we pray for his family Lord Jesus that each one would know you as their personal Savior Father God we continue to lift up uh, JD and Patsy we lift up uh, <coughs> the Barbara and, and Jimmy Lord we lift up Father God uh, our, the children of the church Father God our young people we pray, Father, for, for this church, of Pleasant Grove Wesleyan Church, that this church will stand for you. Yes. Father God, when all else fails, may we stand strong for you, Lord. Yes. Help us, Lord, to always put you first. And Father God, may, may I be a, uh, the pastor you want me to be, and may you help our church, Lord, to grow out and be the, go out and be the witnesses we're supposed to be. And Father God, may everything we say and do yes. uplift and glorify your name. We'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <laughs> you know, sometimes we give prayer requests, and I may not speak your request uh, uh, right off. I know as I was closing, I was thinking about my family there, my wife's family in Texas. But as you speak out their name, you, you covered them. Amen? Amen? You covered them in your prayer request when you call out their name. And it's important uh, that you, you, you pray for your family. Amen. Amen. God is such a good God. Let's get stirred up a little bit. Amen. Amen. How about how about let's sing a little little chorus of uh, this is the day. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord Blessed be the name of the Lord. We want to glorify him today, our King of kings and Lord of lords, who is worthy of all praise, honor, and glory. Yes. Did you bring your papers tonight? Amen. Yes. Amen. Pull those things out. Amen. <laughs> who said they did not? Junior. Junior. I never had one. Oh, what do you mean you never had oh, one? Oh, yeah. You're not coming Wednesday. Oh, you're coming Wednesday. No, he, he laid out Wednesday, didn't he? Knows. <clears throat> come, come up here. <laughs> we will be on page two. You weren't here last week. Oh, Millie, they weren't here last week. They weren't there. Oh. We're here. Go, go make uh, two extra copies of that, and bring make a copy of this one too while you're doing it. Have you got something different than I do? No, they all got the same thing. You talk. <laughs> hey, boss. Paper with words on it. You can make up this. Two shoes. I got mine. Go big quiz, son. Oh, you want me to make up? Well, give me the other paper. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, we're going to get started. Amen. Hey, no, hey, it's not. But God, it's not. God is good, Junior. God is good. Go sit down. <laughs> Daniel, Daniel, Tommy said, You sure are hard on Junior. <laughs> Junior needs to be rode hard sometimes. <laughs> Amen. Church agrees. If church agrees, say amen. 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 <laughs> amen. Well, look, look, we we are look, church. I want us to be excited about going through this Bible and learning about the unity of God. Amen. Because sometimes we 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 even if it's scripture, you know, whatever you read in the Word of God should stir you up. And as a believer in Jesus Christ, as and we are our disciples and we're students of God's word that we should look at everything we see in here say is good uh, to, to read it might be an unfamiliar passage of scripture it might be something that <clears throat> might not be relevant to your life today what you're going through but all of God's word is good yes. amen? amen but we're going through some scripture talk about the unity of God because we're getting ready to talk about baptism followed up by this and so we want to see people to understand what it, what really the unity of God is because we uh, the church talks about the Trinity or the, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And then we have to see how the unity of God and all that pulls together. Amen? Because really what we get in a bad habit of is, is visualizing three separate gods. Amen? You and I are men and women. We're human. And we're not God. So for us to be able to try to explain God, we're limited on our ability. We're limited on our vocabulary. I don't care how many people studied God's Word. Amen? Now there's a lot of people that studied a lot longer and a lot more than I have. But whenever you look at it, they've got the same questions you and I have. They've researched it and they digested it. They, they, they dissected it. They went from what Preachers from a thousand years ago said until today, and finally they just have to make up their mind. They make a decision. This is what it means. And they preach with that, even if they don't really have concrete evidence, that's exactly what it is. And a lot of churches are like that, that they choose something, they say, we're going to preach it like this because that's what everybody else has been doing over the years. Amen? But what you have to do as a child of God is to be able to read and just understand the Word of God yourself. Now, we do that not to say, okay, uh, you read this and what does it mean to you? And that's right. It means we have to understand that there's a right way to read the Word of God. Okay. Amen? Now, we're blessed. We, as our Sunday school Courtney's, we've got a Wesley and Courtney that, that sort of gives us guidance along the way. There's Some of us have study Bibles that has... Uh, commentaries that's written inside there. There's online commentaries. There's a lot of variety of resources. Some of them are supportive one of another and some contradict one another. So sometimes you and I as believers, we can get confused when we're trying to read the Word of God if we're not set strong and determined to say, I'm going to I'm going to believe what God tells me. Amen? And once you really get a true revelation from God, listen, then you're, you're going to be sitting strong. And then you can hear the different verses of Scripture with an understanding of what it really means. <clears throat> so we're talking about the unity of God or the one God, which is the title of this. And we're starting off on our second page, which is in Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. Revelation chapter 1, verse 8 says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Now what's so peculiar and what is great about this scripture, you're going to see it in just a little bit when we get into Isaiah, but you'll see that this sort of follows up from the Old Testament that we read about last week. When it says, I'm the first and the last, Alpha and Omega means I'm the first and the last. Amen? Amen. But this is an angel of the Lord speaking on behalf of the Lord. But he's giving the words what God is, what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying. But he's, if, 
Who's, whose Bible's got the letters of Christ in red? Okay. So most of you, if you're reading this, what I just read is written in red. And so these are the words of Jesus Christ. And he's saying, I am the Alpha, I am the Omega. Which is the same thing that God the Father said in the Old Testament, that he is the first and the last. But it also gets to this last portion of this that says, the Almighty. Now see, this should start breaking down any uh, confusion where people start trying to say Jesus was just merely a man. And Jesus is merely the Son of God in reference to the same way we entitle, entitle our children as our sons. Mm -hmm. right? Because the Son of God is not the same way as I am the son of my dad or Jeffrey is my son. I can't tell you that I've got the greatest explanation of, of the deity of God because I'm just a man. And the only study materials I have is what God's ordained that's before me. But whenever I read this, if God in what we've heard so far, that there's only one God, and then we hear this, that Jesus says, I am the Almighty, then it starts pointing that Jesus is God in the flesh. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's continue on in the book of Jude. Now that's the next book behind, just the next page back, two pages, in the book of Jude, 20, verse 25. I want, to read, I want to read verse 24 and 25. Now Jude was Jesus' half-brother. Did you know that? Yeah. Now Jude, you, you think of this as that Jude didn't start off believing that Jesus is the Son of God. He didn't start off that way. And so the same way as the, the conflict you may have with your loved ones because they knew your past. Now the greatest part about Jesus, Jesus didn't have a past, but he was the oldest brother. I sometimes wonder if he picked on his siblings the way older children pick on their the new ones coming along. Yeah. You know? Now, I, I believe Jesus had a sense of humor. You know, I believe he... I, you know, I, I just think God has a sense of humor. There's some funny things you can read about in the Word of God. But you look at this as that... Uh, I don't know what Jesus could have said to Jude or to his uh, other sisters and brothers that... To make them be delayed in their believing. But this is what Jude says here in verse 24 and 25. It says, Down to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Now, he's describing his brother on the flesh side. But he's describing God on the spirit side. Amen? Now you and I, we, we, we get it all twisted up trying to explain that because we think of flesh and spirit, but you and I also have flesh and spirit. In verse 25, to the only wise God, our Savior. Now, he, he's, he's finishing up his letter. He's finishing up what he's getting ready to say here in Jude. And he said, To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. So Jude is saying that he wants to give his brother, Jesus, all the glory and the honor. He's the only Savior. He's the only wise God, our Savior. In the Old Testament, we read last week that there's only one Savior. Now, when we don't start putting all these scriptures together, uh, a, a little pop quiz, who read their scripture except for Junior? He didn't have his. So, and, and I'm sorry, you guys got your copy yet? She's still back there in the back getting them, isn't she? Hurry up, Judy. So, she's back there on the phone. I hear her talking. <laughs> <laughs> she can't get it free. She can't get it. Is that what she's saying? Yeah, she's She quit picking on me. <laughs> but so who was able to read their scripture? I know you've been busy, but take time to read this scripture. Okay? It's very important that, that you take the assignments. You might not be able to do them all, but take some time to read the scripture that I'm sharing with you. 
Now, what the advantage would have been that you could start flowing with me. Now, some of you are already, uh, I, I'll use the term, have caught my spirit to sort of see what I, which direction we're heading with the, with the way the church is getting ready to go and, and the way the sermons are going. But the, the purpose of you getting those copies was you just go ahead and let it plant a seed. One is that I don't have to try to explain it in great detail because you've already meditated on it. Right? But here we want to continue to go forward because all of God's word is going to reflect and start backing up itself. Now look at John chapter 1. Now this is a familiar passage of scripture. I quote this one quite regularly. But in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, remember that this scripture was written probably uh, in, in 50 years or more after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If, when we read it, we read it like the scribe was writing it down as things was happening. But John did not know and did not have the revelation that Jesus was, was God in the flesh when he first met Jesus. Right? Here this is at the beginning part. But he reflected back. And he under inspiration of God. He pinned this down. That in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And so his disciples. And his apostles here. They understood the deity of Jesus Christ. Now they didn't start off that way. And they didn't really fully understand when we went through the uh, resurrection of Jesus. They really didn't fully understand the, the purpose of Jesus coming. They thought Jesus was just going to start off reigning and he wasn't going to have to die. But Jesus said he came to die for our sin. In 114, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, see, that's the great part about God. God is truth. And God don't lie. Everything about God is truth. All of God's word is true. Did you know that God's word is true even when you can't explain it? I was listening to... Uh, I don't know, a clip on Facebook and they was having a, uh, a debate. Be careful when you try to debate somebody about God. Uh -oh. Amen? Uh, in fact, let me encourage you not to get into a debate. Because the first thing the devil will do, he'll twist up your words. I don't have to tell you uh, that God is real, you you prove to me that God's not real. But I know God is real because He lives inside of me. Yeah. I was taking a course, uh, and I asked this young man. I said, as a Hispanic man, I said, uh, "What makes you think God is real?" And he's not one high educated uh, young man, you know. He grew up in the country and, and he's uh, just a basic worker he says how can you look at all this and not believe that God is real amen but the question that came up was if Jesus is God what happened when he died thank you when, what happened when he died for those three days was God dead for those three days. Yeah. Now, see, this is the question that comes up for people that, uh, that I think it was a no putting down any other denomination or religion, <clears throat> but it was just because of instruction, it was a Muslim man that was asking this question. Now, I didn't, I didn't listen to it long enough to hear all of his response, except for he started going into the Trinity. I don't want to go into the Trinity because. Trinity is not mentioned in the Word of God. But the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are mentioned in the Word of God. It just depends on what our understanding is. Now the Bible teaches that God is Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is Spirit. So therefore, who is the only flesh? 
that we can see of God? Jesus Christ. Right? He, Jesus says God is spirit. Those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So he gets to this part that, that the, so the Holy Spirit is spirit. And so we look at this. Uh, I, I have to keep things simple. Because I've heard so many philosophies, and I'm sure you have too, when they start trying to determine and try to dis describe the Godhead. Whenever you think of God the Father, you're thinking of Creator. You're thinking of all Almighty God. All this all in a nutshell. And the Spirit of God is the essence of God. or he's a, He stretches out, if you'll let me say that. And I look at this as the, Jesus as the flesh of God is the extension of God, like His hand reaching out. You know, because Jesus, uh, God was not limited to one spot. Jesus in the flesh was only in one location at a time. But God was still everywhere. Jesus as a man started off, according to his testimony, was limited. He was under the same uh, uh, restrictions such as gravity. I, you know, I, I was thinking about it because we know he walked on water, right? It's like, how hard would it have been for John the Baptist to baptize Jesus? Right? Come back, it's like a helium balloon. You know, hold him under there like pushing down an inner tube in the water. You know, but you know, but Jesus had to allow himself to be submerged in the water. Jesus had to allow himself to die on the cross. Because God is life. There's no way that Jesus would have died if he hadn't have permitted himself to die. And the only reason he permitted himself was so that he could take our punishment. He could die for our sins. Not for his sin, but for our sin. Let's turn over to John chapter 17. John 17 verse 3. And this is the eternal life that they might know thee the only true God in Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Now Jesus is praying, so let me back up to verse 1. It says, These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son that thy Son also may glorify thee. Now you got to take one verse of Scripture and don't just live by one verse of Scripture. That's why God gave us the whole Word of God. You got to study to show yourself approved. You got to rightly divide the word of God. So we look at this. If we just look at this verse of scripture and we don't look at all the capital letters, uh, and we we follow this, well, that's a father and son relationship. Jesus gave a lot of examples of father and son relationships, such as the prodigal son. He looked at uh, Abraham and Isaac, amen. Jacob, uh, Jacob, and well, Isaac against Jacob and his other son Esau. <clears throat> We see a lot of father and son relationships distinguished or described in the Bible. But you have to understand as a believer in God and in Jesus Christ that it is not the same father and son relationship. Amen? Now you have to, you have to look at that because it's not, it's not possible that man could take away sin. <coughs> Only God can take away sin. Amen. And that, what, that's what we heard last week whenever Jesus says, I and my father are one, and, and they wanted to stone him because, not because he'd done good works, but he called himself God. See, some people can't handle the truth. They wanted Jesus oftentimes to speak plainly. Just tell us what you mean. And when he would speak plainly, it would go right over their head or they didn't want to receive it. Many times in the church, we can't tell you some things directly because sometimes whenever I give a message, God gives me a certain way to deliver. And oftentimes it's in parables. <clears throat> and it may seem unfair, but it may be not meant for you to get it, but meant for this side to get it. You understand? So when you read the Word of God the first time, you may not you may not understand it the first time you read it. 
And it's hard for you to come in here and I say, okay, write down all these scripture that I give you. Right? Because number one, 90% of you don't have an ink pen. Right? And but no, this, but I've given you the scripture to read and review at home. So don't just read it one time. Read it, highlight it, begin to cross-reference it. If you got study Bibles, look up the other little references it has with it. Amen. But here again, John 17, verse 3. Now let me finish this other in verse 2. As thou hast given him power over all flesh. He's talking about the Son, right? And he's talking. Now, what's strange is that John had to go by the leadership of God of what Jesus said because John wasn't there when Jesus was praying. He, he, you, if you're not careful, you're, you're thinking that he's sitting there writing down the exact word. He's going, what did he say? You know, that's not the way it went. He, the Holy Spirit said, this is what Jesus was saying to John. As thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is the and this is eternal life. Excuse me. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So he's talking to Father, and you can break this down and read it different ways. But I want you to read it this way for tonight. That thou hast sent the only true God in Jesus Christ. Now I'm not Jesus Christ, I'm just sort of I want to be careful to make sure you understand what I'm saying. As Jesus was praying that thou hast sent the only true God in Jesus Christ. Christ was not his last name. It was who he was, the Messiah, the anointed one. Amen? Amen. Let's flip in the Old Testament back to Isaiah chapter 42. And what's going to be strange about this, mine went, for some reason when I flipped back, I went right to Isaiah. The more you the more you read and you start turning these pages, your Bible is just going to turn there for you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Now, what I sort of want to plant a seed with you is that as we're learning and we're studying about the unity of God, is that you'll find that my messages revolve around the kingdom of God, <coughs> the unity of God, and the name of God. Everything I preach. Amen? Amen? Everything I preach talks about the name of Jesus Christ and what is Jesus' deity. <clears throat> Amen? <clears throat> and the purpose of the kingdom. And we're living in the kingdom of God even right now as we're waiting to go into heaven. Amen? Amen. And let me highlight this. is that it's, You can experience some heaven right now. Some of you, how many of you felt like you've been going through hell sometimes? Right? The same as you feel like you can go through hell, you can go through heaven too. Amen. 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 And the way and the way you know that the Holy Spirit begins to move inside you, and you say, "I'm counting it all joy." Lord, this flesh is going through hell. The the doctor says this, and the doctor says that. The the body don't feel good, but Lord, I'm focused and I'm drawing up to you. Lord, I'm I'm drawing nigh to you. Amen. As we draw not to God, the Bible says if we draw not to Him, we just read it Sunday. He's going to draw not to us. Amen. You, you reach out your arms. I can't imagine any of you, especially you just get having that grandbaby. Uh, that, that when that grandbaby, when she first sticks your arms like that, you're just going to stick your hands out. What do you want? No, no but when them babies stick their arms up, you pick them up and love on them. Don't you? And that's the way God does you and I. We stick our arms up and say, Lord, I want you. I want you guys, whenever your health will allow you, when we come in here to church service, I want you to raise those hands up. Lord, I want you. And you wait and see what you feel. You'll feel God by his Holy Spirit reach down and embrace you and love on you. Amen? That's some pretty good stuff right there, ain't it? <laughs> I have to tell you, that's some good stuff. Let's go, let's go ahead and read this Isaiah 42, verse 8. <clears throat> I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Now, I want you to uh, 
mark that about graven images because we're getting ready to see something on the next portion. But this is what is, when we look at this again, I am the Lord, that is my name. Now, Lord, capital L-O-R-D, that you see capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, in Spanish is Jehovah, right? And so it's also, as, like I mentioned to you before, it was four letters. They couldn't even say the name of God. Whenever, whenever Moses said, what's your name? He says, it's the Lord. They had to add in some letters to be uh, 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 Yahweh, right? And then Jesus is Yeshua. But we look at this, we start saying they had to add some vowels in there. That we didn't have the name of God. Remember, we had some uh, descriptions of God, such as Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord healeth thee. Jehovah Nisi, my banner high, the Lord my banner high and lifted up. Amen. We look at all these other names or descriptions of God that we get to the old, uh, the New Testament and he says, I've given him a name that is above all names. Remember us going through the names? Remember? And that, that triangle at the top of that triangle that all the other names fit inside here and the top of that triangle was the name of Jesus. That, that his name is above all names. So just like every service, let us not fail to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, even in today's service. Amen. That if I mess up this sermon, if I mess up the way I teach or the way I preach, I will still claim the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> now, Isaiah 44, verse 8. Now, I've, read, I've got it, two versions right here in uh, Isaiah 44, verse 8, the NIV, and then the King James Version. Now, the King James Version says, Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told you, told thee from that time, and have declared it. Ye are my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not one. Now, is that what all your Bibles say? The new King James Version. So, what does your say in the New King James Version? It says, "Do not fear nor be afraid. Have I not told you from that time and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? Indeed, there is no other rock. I know not one." So that's the same way. So what I was—that's what I wanted to highlight tonight, and that's why it's important that you study the Word of God. Now, I've got another. Uh, group of pages that we'll see if we can get some uh, printed out for you. But this was the Hebrew word for, for God. Now, the, this, the second God that I read in my old King James Version, that was the same one that Miss Doris read in the new King James Version, but that second God was rock. Now, remember in, the, in verse 42, I mean chapter 42, it says there'll be no more graven images. There'll be no more images. Right? Now here, listen to this. When they've got over here to Isaiah 44, he says there'll be no other rock. There's no other rock. There's no other God. There's no other rock. And the Hebrew word would meant rock in the way God was written there. That, that word was different in the first Hebrew. The first God was a different Hebrew word than the second God. Okay? So it's important that you, when you have your Bible studies, and you know, we can look at this for years. You can be saved for years. And all you read, like I had, I told you that, I told you all that I, I got saved by the King James Version Bible, and that's just what I preach out of, and that's what I read. But you cannot limit yourself to your own, to your own understanding. You want to grow. You should always want to hear. And that's why you can't just say, I, I come to this altar and get saved and I never come to study God's Word. I, I, if I never studied and learned more than what I learned the day when I accepted Jesus as my Savior, I would have turned back and went back into the world. Why? Because I wouldn't have had the power. I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have started growing in the Lord. That I wouldn't have learned how to, to feel his presence. <clears throat> Whenever I would start, when my cup would start running low, it would just run out because I wouldn't be filling it up again. 
And that's why it's so important to come and hear God's study and come and hear God's preaching and come and worship the Lord. Amen? But this is what it this is what I sort of wanted to put together. Now, in this, now this is like this is several pages. I know you had a hard time printing that up one off. But this has a lot of scripture dealing with the rock. The same rock that was talking about this rock here. Amen? But if you'll think about it, if you'll let me think and just sort of speak something out uh, once, is that whenever Moses was taking the children of Israel across the desert, if you think about it, how that rock followed them, now there's a verse of scripture if you look at Deuteronomy let's look at Deuteronomy since I I, I put a note on your on your pages there 1 Corinthians 10 yeah. 4 is what you got first okay okay we'll look at that one first since Miss Doris is the she's the map reader <laughs> no 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 but she's right because I'd, I'd emphasize about you trying to stay in first. order <laughs> I know that's why she did that because I'd, I'd already told you guys I want you to read it in this particular order <laughs> And, uh, and then I skipped it, didn't I, Miss Dory? <laughs> Look, 1 Corinthians 10, 10, 4. Now, my dad heard that. He said, Roger. Like 10, 4, Roger. Good buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Over and out. So it says, now it's talking about Moses. It says, let me, in fact, I'll start at verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not have you should be ignorant uh, how that all our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat that same spiritual meat and did all drink that same spiritual rock for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ now now, you sort of got to pull all this together and whenever I said there's not going to be other or any other rock right so that goes back to this verse 44 uh, that says there be no other rock. But the Bible says this rock was Christ, the Messiah. So it's saying that God is the rock. Like the song we sang, I don't know if we said we practiced it, did we? I'm standing on the solid rock. Yeah. You know, is that, that we realize that, that God is the solid rock. Christ is the solid rock. Amen. And so when you start uh, our praise team and worship our worship leaders, when you start getting to understanding the name of God and, and the deity of God, part of the songs you won't even want to read and sing anymore. Because you'll start saying, does this really edify the true deity of God? Because not everyone that wrote a hymn, not everyone that wrote a book, will have the same understanding that you have. Amen. Amen? In fact, didn't it, isn't that what we read last week? Not everybody had the understanding about the deity of God. In fact, I would always be careful to say not every Wesleyan is going to believe the same way as us Wesleyans do. That's right. The same way as all Baptists don't believe the same. All Catholics don't believe the same. You don't have to believe just because you follow the doctrine of the, the Wesleyan Discipline does not mean you all Wesleyans believe the same. <clears throat> because you're going to grow faster than somebody else. Amen? Amen? You might even grow faster than the one that wrote the Sunday school lesson. Amen? Amen. So it's, you're, we're not taking, I'm, I was telling, uh, and I told you guys when I first started preaching here, I'm not here to preach denomination. But I've learned that if I was going to be a denomination, I'm a Wesleyan. And now I'm the permanent Wesleyan pastor here at Pleasant Grove Wesleyan Church. Right? But, it, but go figure. Right? But the purpose is, is not to be the pastor of Pleasant Grove Wesleyan Church. It's to be your pastor. Amen? Because the title is the title of the church. We're the body of Christ. And God has allowed me to bring forth the message that he wants his children to have to grow and to be strong and to stand strong and that no matter what people come up and try to confuse you with you can say we can go to any other church and listen to other preachers amen I want you to go to revivals and hear preachers and you'll hear it whenever they 
if they start contradicting what you're learning in the Bible, you weigh it out. <laughs> weigh it out. Amen? I've heard a lot of different sermons. And some of them I said, let me study that. When I preach something, that's why I want you to have the scripture. Study it. Follow behind me. Amen? I don't want you to believe something just because I say it. I want you to read it in the Word of God. I guess my, I, I would think I always use mom as an example or a parent that says, do it because I say so. <laughs> you know? How many of our children that says, why do you want me to do that? <laughs> uh, 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 finally, we just said, because I said to. I'm tired of explaining why. <laughs> I know best. I'm the daddy, right? <laughs> but see, as the pastor, I've, I've, I've heard a lot of different sermons. I'm not a novice. Amen? Amen? But at the same time, I've been sitting there where you have, where somebody might present something different that I've not really studied out before. So you, you take it, you meditate on it, you read it, and then you take it in perspective with the way I preach. Amen? And then you start putting it together how, how God is to you. See, you've got to have an answer for yourself. That's why people can confuse us because we don't have an answer of who God is for us as an individual. So whenever you get an understanding of who God is for you, you can be saved for years. Look, I told you I was saved for a long time before I learned how to love God. I sang the song, Oh, How I Love Jesus. But I didn't know how to fall in love with God. And I'm thankful for Pastor Jose who taught me how to fall in love with God. Amen? <clears throat> see, you sometimes don't know until you see somebody else in love with him. Right? Because there's a lot of preachers that they can talk it, but they don't necessarily walk it. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? And a lot of church people, they talk it, but they don't all walk it. That's right. And it's hard. You know, you know it's hard to, to really walk the love of God the way God wants us to. But we'll work on that, won't we? <laughs> let's, keep, let's keep on. And we're, we're going to share this up. Uh, in, yeah, it's in Deuteronomy. Let's, thank you for keeping me straight. Then we're going to do our last verse. And then I'm going to uh, have a special prayer. We're going to call Miss Judy up to pray for her son-in-law. <coughs> Deuteronomy. Verse 30, chapter 32. Over here, says six four. Huh? Six four. Six four. What says six four? Thirty two. I want this. I want this second page. Oh. You know, we'll eventually go back to six four, honey. But this, this ain't not right now. Thirty two. He in verse four. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. Now, you and I, we're blessed. We have the Old Testament and we have the New Testament. Amen. You and I have more power than the average bear. Right? Because you think of the Old Testament the way they had to go through. You and I have the Holy Spirit to live within us. To help us discern right from wrong. To help you and I to, to uh, uh, understand the written word of God. Remember, I take it. Got that one, you said. So to help you and I that as we uh, study God's word is to uh, the rightly divided. It helps us give us the Holy Spirit is your teacher, the Bible says. Let the Holy Spirit teach you. So what I was getting ready to get at before I seen this thing flying around was that I bring scripture, but God is the teacher. I hate to say it like this, but I'm just the donkey up here talking. Amen? My wife, what is that, honey? 
<laughs> you're speaking my language. You see, I'm just a donkey up here talking that, that God, look, God, if we can say what words is in the Bible, and God will, I remember, I think I told the church this once, I give a sermon, my sister-in-law, her English wasn't the best in the world, but she got up to testify what God had spoke to her in that service. Didn't have nothing to do with what I preached. <laughs> I, mean, I thought I was preaching a pretty good sermon. But what God gave her from the sermon was a different message. So you come in the door hungry and thirsty after righteousness. Whatever God, whatever you need, you bring it before God. And God will plant a seed no matter what the message or the scripture I use. Sometimes it will line right up with what you need. And sometimes he'll plant a thought that gives you the right direction. Amen? Now let's look at Isaiah 45, 18. And then we're going we're gonna to stop there and we'll do the, the last page the next time. Isaiah 45, 18. I know this is, as Miss uh, Doris told me, is that a lot of these scriptures she had marked in her Bibles already, her Bible already, but some things that are fresh to her, that she marked those. I pray that some of these scriptures that, it, that you're learning some stuff, and some of it is review for you, and some of it is the Holy Spirit will uh, give me the words to say, it will highlight things to say, well, now I'm looking at it differently. Uh, I, I'm looking at it at a different perspective. I've heard other preachers preach it. Now I'm hearing my pastor preach it. I'm going to look at it the viewpoint he is. And then God's going to give me a, a more full understanding. In verse 18, Isaiah 45, verse 18. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it, he created it, not in vain, he formed it to, to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Now, we're going to stop there today, but we're not stopping. Amen? So when you, previous scripture, they said that in him were all things created, and by him uh, nothing was made, that, that by him all things were made that was made. Amen? And that was talking about Jesus Christ. He was also the creator. And here we're looking at God as the only creator. In, in the beginning of Genesis chapter 1, God said it, and the Spirit of God moved and made it happen. And, and, I, and I visualize this when you start understanding. You read John chapter 1, and in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. God spoke the Word. And the Word went out and made things happen. Amen? Now, you and I, we, we look, we, you can't separate it. Amen? You can't separate the deity. And I want to be careful when I say it because my vocabulary and my pronouns aren't all uh, the properness that God deserves. Amen? I try to whenever I write, I write something or I write an email or I'm writing a text and I'm talking about His and I'm talking about the Lord, I try to put an H, capital. You know, I try to capitalize him and capitalize his you know as I write it and sometimes I sometimes I don't but I try to do that because I want to emphasize that he Jesus Christ is the almighty Amen. Amen. now we're focusing on the unity of the Godhead the Father Son and Holy Spirit Amen. that what we're saying does not contradict Matthew 28 it brings forth understanding of Matthew 28. And you'll go back and you'll read Matthew 28. And I'll have, don't worry, I've got plenty of scripture when I give, give you the baptism scripture that will cover all that. But when Jesus talks about baptizing the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit, amen? So it's not, what I'm teaching is not contradicting, it's fulfilling. So I want you to, don't get ahead of the sermons, don't get ahead of the teaching. But take a little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. Meditate on it. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. And you're going to see, look, you're 90% you're of the church that's here tonight. 
We have some people that come in on Sunday that, well, some get to watch that's not here. I know Jacqueline, they have a lot of times they tune in on a Wednesday night on live stream. Amen? But some that don't get it, don't get the full Wednesday night. I was I was coming to church tonight and I seen, uh, and I don't know, the Wesleyan Church is near your house uh, on that main, on Snow Road. Bethlehem. 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 I don't know if they have Wednesday night services. But I was thinking when I drove by there, uh, man, I'm glad we started our Wednesday night service. Yes. You know, I, I don't know about you, but I, I've been growing. Uh -huh. I, mean, I grow more, uh, and I and I get recharged middle of the week. You know, I know Greg coming in. You look tired. You look like you got beat up and <laughs> and uh, beat up today, and run run over and then backed over again. But you come in here tonight. You got a smile on your face because one. Your, your new pawpaw, right? Yeah. And, and you're probably tired, you you know. And I'm sure Miss Sharon's over there with that grandbaby now, ain't she? And, and I'm, so I'm really expecting her to deliver today, and I was surprised that even you'd be here tonight. Mm -hmm. Amen. But we, we come in God's house, and we, we say, I'm getting closer. I, I'm determined I'm not going to give up. And here at our church, and you're going to see as, as the time comes up, uh, we had somebody ask you about membership tonight. I said, bring bring that up on Sunday. We're, we'll vote them in, uh, let the church vote Sunday. Uh, but we want to see everybody being connected. And, and I'll give a greater illustration on that later about the bond and the strength of being church members. Amen? Amen. But you're going to find uh, everything as we're pulling stronger together in unity. I don't want to be a pastor that's going to cause any division in the church. So if there's ever something that I say that you uh, don't understand, because sometimes people might take something I say out of context. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And sometimes I might say something out of context and not mean to. Right? right. The last thing I will ever do is bring division in the church. Amen. God's not the author of confusion, and God's not a, <laughs> divine, a dividing God. He's a multiplying God. He did divide the Red Sea, though. Yeah. Right? Yes. He did do that dividing. Mm -hmm. He did separate the wheat and the tares. Yeah. What's that, brother? Brother Landon, he, um, did they <laughs> left the church because of the color of the carpet? It was, it was somebody, yeah, that's, that was a young man that was here yesterday. Yes. yes. And uh, so, <clears throat> look, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. I just make sure which microphone I had on. I couldn't remember if I had that one, that one, or this one on. As, uh, we're working on the sound. Amen? And uh, But God's going to, things going to be just right. We want things just right for the Lord. Amen? Amen. So we want to go to the Lord in prayer. I know you wanted a special prayer. Did anybody else want special prayer today? Okay, if you'll come on up, Miss Judy. Um, Miss Judy's... Uh, son-in-law has had a heart attack and they're going to have surgery on him tomorrow and uh, she wanted to stand in on his behalf. <coughs> Amen. And uh, so I'm, I'm going to have uh, somebody. I, I'll keep it. I'll have Brother Greg and Miss Doris. I want you to come up here with me. <coughs> Brother Randall, you go ahead and come up here too. I would have you all come up but this is for time purposes. I want the rest of you to stretch it. Stretch your hands up this way. Okay, send a good vibe. All right, send send. I believe what God says. Say, I believe what God says. Amen. Father God, we lift up Miss Judy, Lord, and as she comes in and requests prayer for her son and uh, son-in-law, Lord, I lift up uh, joy before you, Lord. Lord God, we know, Father, of, of our limited understanding of. Of him having a heart attack and you know what his his body uh is going through lord we pray father as he goes to the, uh have a surgery tomorrow that you give the doctors the wisdom and the understanding the greatest thing of all lord i pray for his salvation i pray for him to know you as his, as his personal savior and lord god that i pray lord that he has an understanding that if, if this heart attack didn't take him out that you have a plan and your plan is always to uplift and glorify your name so, Lord, I pray that you'll speak to him, give him the strength to recover and the strength and the boldness to speak the name of Jesus. I ask you, Lord, to bless uh, 
uh, Miss Judy and her family. Pour your spirit out upon her. Give her the words and the right words to say to her daughter. Lord God, and to minister to her family. That in everything that is said and done, I anoint her in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, that as she goes forth, Lord God, may uh, joy also be anointed. Father God, that you say whoever is sick, let them call upon the elders of the church. And Father God, as she call, has called upon the elders of the church, uh, on the behalf of joy, we lift him up before you. And we pray for your Holy Spirit to be around him even right now. And Lord, for your Holy Spirit to go through with this surgery with him. And Father God, to speak to him, even Lord God, while he's there in the hospital. We give you the thanks, the praise, the honor, and the glory. May you keep us all safe tonight as we go our separate ways. And may everything uplift and glorify the name of Jesus. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, look, I appreciate all of you being here tonight. Sunday, uh, you can go ahead and stop that.